Hi everybody, it's Diane from NatureWorks and it is my favorite day of the year. It is the day that we start tagging monarch butterflies here at NatureWorks. So we're gonna make this video, I'm gonna do it in two parts and I'm gonna show you how to tag monarchs and why we tag monarchs and then we're gonna let them go in the second video. So here is our monarch nursery. We have had this set up since June. Uh, Lots of monarch butterflies come here to NatureWorks because we have so much milkweed in our gardens and they lay eggs on the milkweed. We have a board explaining all of the stages that they go through and this is up in our retail store so you can come in and see it anytime. Um, we do have a little bit of raising going on. We've got cat, um, caterpillars here in this cage. So we leave a lot of them outside but we like to bring some in to show you how we raise them. It teaches kids about nature. It teaches people not to use pesticides in their garden. It teaches you the best plants to plant for these guys. And it's just amazing. It's an amazing process to watch. Then we've got a net full of chrysalises in here. And then down here, we've got the butterflies that we are going to release outside today. So all of these hatched this morning, believe it or not. This was kind of a shock how many there were and usually there's just a handful every day but these guys I they hatch today so I need to let them go today I can't can't keep them overnight in the cage um, they're too active if it was raining or something I could leave them in here overnight but it's a beautiful sunny day so we want to get them we want to get them going so what I have here is my monarch watch tagging kit so I had to um, purchase this about a month ago. And what it is, it, it's these little tags that we actually put on the wing of a butterfly. And as you can see, there's a little serial number on each one. <clears throat> so each monarch butterfly will have a specific number. And what this is used for is to track their migration from here all the way to Mexico. So scientists study this. This is called, um, people do this all over the country. We're all part of this big citizen scientist project. So on this sheet here, Monarch Watch conveniently tells you how to do it and where to place the tag. And if you put the tag in this spot, it does not hurt the butterfly from flying at all. So I opened up my beautiful yellow envelope and I got my tags out. And then I've already started tagging the butterflies in this net, but I have a few to show you. So you write down the serial number, the date that you're releasing them, if it was a male or a female, and if you reared it or if you caught it wild to tag it, and then the town that you let it go in. So I've done these 12. I'm gonna show you how I do an actual butterfly. So they are, they're, they're fragile, but they're a lot tougher than they look, which is wonderful. So I'm going to reach in, I grab it in a specific way that the butterfly doesn't flap around much, which is good because I don't want it to injure its wings. And I want to put the tag right there, just like it told me on this picture. So what I do is I grab the tag with my fingernail. I try not to touch the back of the tag so it's really sticky and you can see the butterflies like what is going on. So I'm going to place the tag right there and I'm going to grab it with my other finger so it's it, I don't lift it up at all and I'm going to give it a little squeeze and that's how I know for sure that it's attached well to the butterfly. And then I write down the information. So this tag is A G. BT 287 and today is the 30th and this is a male and you're probably wondering how do I know that it's a male and I'm going to show you it's easier to see it up here the male butterfly has two scent glands there and the female does not and the female has wider black striping than the male does. So I'm gonna put it in here. I'm just gonna set it on these beautiful zinnias that Amber got ready for me. And then it can just, so that is a male. Can you see the two dots when it opens its wings? 
It's not going to open its wings now. <laughs> so I'm going to do um, two more and then we'll go outside and let these guys go. So I'm going to grab another one. Now, since we don't know the days exactly that these monarchs will hatch, what I'm going to do is if we have a bunch hatch one day, I'm going to post it on Facebook and invite anyone in that day that would like to watch or help with tagging. So stay tuned to our Facebook page. If we have several of them hatch one day, we're going to post it on Facebook with a time of when we will be releasing the butterflies. And you could come, you can try tagging if you feel if you feel brave, you know, I've taught many, many customers to tag. That's also a male, if you see the two dots on its wings. Beautiful. All right, we've got one more. And let's hope for a female here. I think we got one. So it's important to write it down first because if you forget, it's hard to remember if it was male or female. So I like to write it down right away before I even put the sticker on. Again, right on that discal cell is where I'm putting it. So you can see I'm not moving the butterfly around at all. Its wings aren't flapping, it's very still. That's what I want. If its wings flap around, there's a chance that a wing could get damaged. So, okay, so hopefully one of these butterflies will fly all the way to Mexico to overwinter for the winter. Well, this is a female, let's see. So there's no dots on the back of, oh, she took off there. So the reason we do this is so we can track the monarch butterflies that are in Canada, you know, the, no, the entire Northeast, the Midwest as they travel down to Mexico. So last year, somebody in Madison, Connecticut at Hammonasset reported one of our butterfly tags being there. So I know that that butterfly in particular made it to Hammonasset. Now that's not really far, but a few years ago, we had five butterflies make it to one of the monarch butterfly reserves in Mexico, which was amazing. It was over 3,100 miles away. So something this small can fly 3,100 miles to a reserve in the mountains of Mexico. Um, that butterfly will live all through the winter. And then in March, it will leave Mexico, fly to Texas. And in Texas in March, the milkweed is just coming out of the ground. So it will stop and lay eggs on that milkweed and then it will die. And then, so these guys are the super generation. They live from now until next March. The generation after that, the eggs that are laid in Texas, fly a little further north, lay eggs, and they die. Those are much shorter lived monarchs because they're bred to uh, keep the population going by laying lots of eggs as they go north. So this is probably the fourth generation of monarchs. These are the great, great grandchildren of last winter's monarchs. And hopefully they're gonna make it all the way to Mexico. We'll keep you updated when they release the tag numbers next year if any of these butterflies made it and we invite you to come in and see our beautiful monarch nursery learn about the life cycle and hopefully maybe even tag a monarch when you come in and stay tuned to facebook for that facebook and instagram we will post on days that we're going to re be releasing and at what time and if you're available we'd love for you to come help so all right that's the end of the part one video Part two, we're gonna take these guys outside and we're gonna watch them fly free. So stay tuned for that.